What are a sine and a cosine? I'll give you a different answer from the answer you'll typically get. The sine of an angle is a definite measure for the deflection or deviation which occurs when you apply that angle. Let me show you what I mean by that. If I take a one meter ruler and just draw just any angle like this, then the sine of the angle is the portion I get here. This is simply sine of this angle alpha. Now I have no clue what this angle alpha is. I just drew an arbitrary angle, arbitrary line. But I can easily measure what it is, even having no further knowledge about the angle, by putting a ruler here and saying, okay, well that's 60, a little over 60 centimeters, say 61 centimeters. So the sine of my angle is 0.61. Now, this is very low tech, but actually, not knowing what the angle is, I can now figure out reverse engineering, uh, wh what this angle was. Uh, sine reverted, inverted sine of 0.61. Turns out this angle is about 37.6 degrees. Well, it's approximately 37.6 degrees. Mind you, you can only do this if you're using a line of exactly one meter in length and or one unit in length. You could do it as long as you keep the units the same and it's 0.61 then this will always work. Now that's a pretty useless tool then uh, the, the sign if you only can use it if this is 0.6 if this is one meter uh, to get the sign. No, actually it isn't. It's a very useful tool because the relationship is simply very linear. Say for instance, if you would want to know you've traveled for uh, 28 miles here. This is not one meter now, but it's 28 miles. Just any arbitrary measure. Now you can figure out in 28 miles with this angle alpha how much you've moved sideways. Because actually it will simply be 28 times the sine of your angle alpha will mean how much you move sideways. So that's uh, 0.61 multiplied by 28 miles. You will have moved sideways by about 17.1 miles. So you see it's a really useful tool. Oh, same thing for the cosine, <clears throat> because if we say that the sine of an angle is a measure of the deflection or deviation which occurs when you apply this angle alpha, now what's the cosine? Well, the cosine is simply what remains of your forward movement. If you would have moved forward without that angle alpha, you would have moved forward to about here. But you haven't, because you've used this angle alpha, you've actually moved forward less than you would have without the angle. Now this remainder here is the cosine. And if I've drawn this correctly, let me see if that's about the case. Uh, pretty much like that. Well, that's pretty close. If I've drawn this correctly, then this is where my cosine is. My cosine now is a little bit less than 80 centimeters, a little bit less than 0.81. So let's say that the cosine is about 89.5. Approximately 
eight nine five then if I've done that correctly if I've done that accurately which is hard on a chalkboard but uh, if I've done that correctly then that should also work out inverted cosine of 0.895 gives me an angle which is completely screwed up is 26.5 degrees which immediately shows me that I'm an idiot because that means that I've been really inaccurate it shouldn't have been 895 it should have been 795 you see you trap yourself easily by just being an idiot 795 and that works out much better I would bet so I'll make it inverted cosine of 0.795 and what do you know it gives me 37.3 well I don't think that's all that bad for a uh, chalkboard it confirms that that's pretty much the angle of uh, 37 and a half degrees so same thing here if you've moved forward now uh, for uh, if you've moved along this line for 28 miles then you can now determine how much you've moved forward because now your forward movement here x1 x1 equals 28 miles multiplied by the cosine of alpha equals 28 times uh, 28.0 multiplied by 0.795 equals 22.5 point two miles so you see a sine and a cosine are very useful tools why do I disagree with uh, the explanation most people give you for the, the, the sine and the cosine most people will immediately start to tell you when you are asking for uh, what's the sign well the sign and they'll start telling you about so uh, TOA and this is an acronym which basically says that your sine equals the opposite side divided by your hypotenuse your cosine equals your adjacent side divided by your hypotenuse and your tangent uh, equals your opposite side divided by your adjacent side that's well, a lot of mumbo jumbo and it'll tell you exactly how to calculate sine cosine and tangent but that's like when you're explaining a hammer and you're asking well what's a hammer and people can tell you well you know it's got a wood shaft and a metal head and this and that well it's very interesting so now you know how to make a hammer what are you gonna do with the hammer so I think it's much better explaining first what a hammer is for and then you can explain how you make it and how exactly you would make the best hammer. But initially <clears throat> you want to be sure that you understand that your sign is your deflection before you start worrying about exactly how to calculate it. So what does this mean? Actually what I've already mentioned you have to make sure that if you're just going to determine your sign by just measuring that you have a one unit there. And that's exactly what so does. sine is your opposite side that's right here your all divided by your hypotenuse well hypotenuse is basically the angle bit so what you're really doing here is you're normalizing the sine so that it will go towards the value so this is where this is one 
by dividing it by whatever value this is, you will end up with a normalized situation where you can figure out what this is if the length of your hypotenuse is 1. That's all it is. That's all what so means. Same thing for, uh, uh, for ka. Your cosine of your angle is your adjacent side, which is down here, divided by the hypotenuse. Works out so that it will normalize your cosine value for a value of 1. That's all the sine and the cosine are, and they are so incredibly useful that I really dislike people just throwing around Sokotoa and losing the interest of students right from the start.